Well, beloved, we have come to a moment that I'm sure many of you all have been waiting for. And that is the conclusion of our series on Brother Joseph. It's been some rich stuff that we have learned in the process of studying this brother's life. And so I want in this concluding sermon to turn your attention to Genesis chapter 50. Uh -huh. Genesis chapter 50. Yes, sir. And here we stand for the reading of the word. It's a way that we can give honor to the word. God says to us that his word is the lamp unto our feet. Yes, it is. And his word is the light unto our path. Yes, sir. And so if there is anything that we ought to give honor to by standing for it, it should be the word of God and the spirit of the living God. Amen. And Amen. you have certainly done that in this place today. And I want to thank our young adults on this swag Sunday. Say it with amazing Amen. grace. Amen. For leading us. To the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 50. Are you all there? Amen. We come to the point in Genesis chapter 50 where we have seen the restoration and reconciliation of this family. We have walked through much in this chapter, uh, this, this series from chapters 37 to chapter 50. And it is appropriate for us as we come to this final series, of course I could keep on preaching on it, but it is a, an appropriate time for us to transition. Because I said to you early on that Joseph is a type of Jesus. Right. In other words, he is a he is a model. We can glean things from his life yes. that we see manifested in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. That's what it means when somebody says he's a type of Christ. He is not the Christ, but there is much reference in the Old Testament to the New Testament coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we know what has happened. We know that now there has been this restoration. And in chapter 50, Jesus, Joseph, finally sees his father, Jacob, who is now known as Israel. Yeah. And if I could just pause for a moment and say, if there was anybody who was a scoundrel, it was Jacob. Amen. And in this season of Christmas when we are giving, yes. can, I just, can I just preach before I preach? Preach, Pastor. And tell you that if, if Jacob could become Israel, Amen. Wow. then with all of the trickiness and all of the mess that was connected to his life, yeah. and God could turn him around, <laughs> would you take hope and faith to know he could turn around your way with son, your way with daughter, yeah. your that mean acting boss? He's well able, well able. to turn Jacobs into Israel. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Known ultimately as the Prince of Power between God and man. And so. <laughs> I want you to see this reconciliation that takes place. Joseph throws himself on his father in the very beginning of chapter 50 and weeps over him and kisses him. Joseph told the physicians who served him to embalm his father's body, so Jacob was embalmed. His embalming process took the usual 40 days and the Egyptians mourned his death for 70 days. So he gets the opportunity to see his father and not long after he 
all of the blessings, all of the benefits, all of the wealth, everything that has happened, his father has to travel the road that all of us have to travel. And he has to go home to meet his maker. I want you to get from Jacob's life. Doesn't matter how you start. Yeah. What matters is how you finish. Yes, sir. That's good. That's good. Somebody in the house today or somebody who came to the altar, Amen. I want you to embrace that. Because the devil will try to keep your problems and your past, try to make your past your present. Yes, sir. So I want you to do that. And not only do I want you to do that for yourself, but I want you to give somebody else the benefit of your grace. Yes, yes sir. Amen. And release them from what they've done to you. So that you can be free. Amen. 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 Y'all going to help me preach this morning? Yeah. Just tell your neighbor, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't, don't, don't take it. Don't take it past today. Let it go. We're celebrating the season where he died to forgive you. So why don't you live to forgive somebody else? Yes, sir. And so he honored his father. All of the wonderful things that we see in the beginning, Pharaoh honored Joseph's request, and he was able to go and celebrate his life and all of the wonderful parts. But we come to the conclusion of the story. And if you'll pick up with me at verse 14 of this final chapter. After burying Jacob, Joseph returns to Egypt with his brothers and all who had accompanied him to his father's burial. But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. And here's what they said. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said. And so they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers. For the great wrong they did to you. For their sin in treating you so cruelly. Now, can I just pause for a minute? I don't, I don't want to go down too many avenues here. But we see no reference to Jacob telling them to go tell his brother, Joseph, that. So, so they were lying Again. to their father uh -huh. when they said what happened to Joseph. Uh -huh. They lied their whole lives and carried the lie. Uh -huh. And here they are now after all that God has done and they still lie. Uh -huh. Do I need to press that or can I keep reading? Keep going. Help me. Just tell somebody stop lying. Stop lying. Stop lying. Stop them big lies. Stop them little lies. Stop them lies that are convenient to make you feel okay. Amen. Tell them one more time. Stop lying. Stop lying. You are forest from the heart of God. When you lie. Amen. You know why, don't you? Because Satan is the father of lies. And when you lie, it means Satan is controlling you at that moment. The truth sets you free. I don't want to live my life as a liar. When Jesus died that I might be set free. That was a side note, but an important one. 
Because it's so convenient in this culture to lie. People lie to impress, lie to save face, lie because the truth hurts. Jesus. I know you don't want to say it. Turn to the other side and tell them something. Stop. Not, not ask them. Tell, just tell them. Stop lying. Now somebody then said, stop lying. Oh, I heard somebody. Stop lying. You're lying all the time. Not only will God know you're lying, but I'm telling you, my mother knew when I was lying. She was something else. I ain't got time to go all down the road, but she only lived for me 15 years. But I come in trying to be convinced. Ma, I ain't do it. I ain't do it. I ain't do it. Ain't no, ain't no way I did that. Boy, stop lying. Then she hit me with this. I've been knowing you since you, we, you were in my womb. I surrender all. Well, she hit me with that. Yeah, I did have some way to go. And I got it early to say, I'm sorry. That's called repenting. And that's what we as adults need to do. For the big lies, for the little lies, for the line on your resume, for the line to get the job, for the line to get the woman or the man. Because no lie can live forever. I'm not preaching, I'm just giving some pastoral instruction right now. But I, I, I want you to now grab that because it's so prevalent. After all God has done for this family, they still lie. You don't have to lie. Just walk in the truth. Because the truth do you know why some people have mental illness? Chris, to your point earlier? Because they done lied so much. You can't even keep up with your own lies. You're driving yourself crazy with them lies. Here's that great message. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. I could stop right there, but I'm going to keep moving. Because some of y'all think it's over <laughs> when somebody seems like they changed their mind because of your lie. No lie will live forever. He broke down and wept. And the text doesn't tell us whether he's weeping because he knew they were lying. Or why he was, or whether he was convicted. In verse 18, then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? And here's our verse that we've had for all this time. You intended it for harm. But God intended, the New Living Translation said it all, because you did a whole lot of stuff to me. He intended it all for good. He brought me to this position. So I could save y'all's lives and the lives of many people. Yes, sir. No, don't be afraid. You've been a scoundrel. You've been a liar. You tried to kill me. You tried to throw me in the ditch. You tried to put me in the pit. But I will continue to take care of you and your children. Amen. I want you to get that because that's Jesus. 
you, you've done me wrong so many times. I, I made so many ways for you. You turned your back on me so many times. You knew right and did wrong. But I will forgive you. And not only forgive you, but I'm going to continue to take care of you and your generation. Awesome. And you came to church to sit down? You got a problem lifting your hands and shouting, thank you, Jesus? And so he reassured them, John, by speaking kindly to them. And then, of course, it closes. By telling us about the death of Joseph. I would like to talk to you in this final message in this series. From I think a fairly familiar topic. I'd like to talk to you about from the pit to the palace. Yes sir. You may be seated. Presence of the Lord. For those that have been following the series you know. What has happened in this whole process, and I just want to lift up five or six principles and points that will summarize what this series has really tried to convey to us. The first principle that you ought to glean and gain from this passage is the reality that we don't know what life is going to visit upon us, Ty. We can have the best laid plans, but they can go awry. We can have the best made business plan of the house, but it doesn't work out the way we intended. Yes. But if this series has shown us anything, it has shown us that life can be a journey that is filled with both high moments and extreme valley experiences. And there have been some profound truths that I pray that you have grabbed. They've helped me and I pray that they have gripped you and have shown you about God's providential hand. About God's kind of forgiveness. And about the power of faith and having right motivations. Amen. We look at Joseph's story here. What we can see first and foremost in this summary message. That you and I have to trust God's providence. Yes. Yes. Somebody say with me. I got to trust God. God. When I can't trace God. When I can't trace God. Anybody beside me been there? Yeah. All right. Now we praised and we shouted, don't y'all go to sleep on this message. Amen. All right? Wake yourself up. God's providence is a promise that he'll be with you no matter what the circumstances and situations are. His providential promise to you. Yes, sir. Is if you're in me and I'm in you, uh -huh. I'm going to take care of you. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, if you don't get any of the other four points that I've got, would you please grab that? Yes, sir. Amen. Because when we, as our scripture of this week tells us, in this life, you're going to have some tribulations. Uh -huh. Be of good cheer, BJ, it says. Be of good cheer. What? While I'm going through challenges, hell and high water? Yes, Be of good cheer. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the enemy gets so many of us. Because when we're going through a tough time, we get lower than a pregnant egg, which leads us to do low stuff. We get so despondent that we respond to the flesh instead of the spirit. I'm glad I got one or two amens. Can y'all track with me? 
But if we could just turn our mind to the providence that God's got his hand on us. Yes, sir. And that we don't understand why we're going through it. But his providential reality says that they may mean it for harm. He may mean it for harm. The job may mean it for harm. The woman, the man may have meant it for harm. But the God who's got the providential reality of your life is going to turn it around. For good. That's why Paul could come back later and say in Romans 8, 28, all things. All things. Not, not some things, all things. All things. Thomas, not some things, but all things seem to all things. The good stuff you went through, the sickness you went through, probably, and the challenges that you've gone through, the ups and the downs, God's going to work all of those things together for your good. Because he loves you. Yes, sir. Because you belong to him. Yes, Don't y'all go to sleep up in here. I've worked too hard. Stand up. Yes, Amen. Amen. See, the enemy wants you to go to sleep. Amen. You have praised and worshiped, now you want to go to sleep. It's terrible to have to say that with people looking online, but I I, I, I don't care about that. I, you came here, you got dressed, you came to church, wake yourself up. Because somebody going to need to hear this after you leave church. When you get hit from the blind side. When that temptation comes right knocking at your door, you just shout it. And here it comes. And you fall for it. And you feel lower than a pregnant ant. Because you've been there before. And you say, if you get me out of it this time, I ain't going to never smoke it no more. I ain't going to never take another hit of it. I ain't going to never check in the Heartbreak Hotel. <laughs> Thank you, Deacon Lewis. In the upper deck. <laughs> Let me move on. Joseph's life, like many of ours, was marked by adversity from a young age. Some of you are 30, 40, 50, and you're still trying to get over some trauma. Am I right, Dr. Pierce? So that happened when you were a teenager. Or earlier, some crazy uncle did something to you. Crazy aunt did something to you. Crazy, crazy somebody, some teacher did something to you. And you're trying to deal with the adversity that happened in your life. Can you just go back with me for a minute? This man is sold into slavery by his brothers. Yeah. Be one thing for somebody else to capture me and send me, but your brothers? Yeah. Come on, make the application. Some of y'all had people to do stuff to you that should have never been the should have been your protectors. Yeah. Yeah. You still live with the pain of it. Somehow or another in all of that, God has kept you. You should be crazy. You should be in whatever the new St. Easy is. But God kept you by his providence. God kept Joseph. In the darkest of times, he kept him. So the first point I want you to grab today is that you and I, as we end this series, you got to trust God's providence. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. They mean it for harm. Amen. Though you cannot see it, I cannot see it. God means it.
means it for your good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The second point I want you to grab from this extensive series is the power of forgiveness. Yes, sir. Would you say that with me? The power of forgiveness. Now talk to yourself. Preach to yourself this morning. Say, I got to forgive the Negroes. I got to forgive them white folks. I got to forgive them. got to forgive them. So I can free myself. Free myself. Yes, sir. Got to forgive the one that broke my heart. So I can move on to the real McCoy. Yes, sir. Got to forgive. The father, the mother, the uncle that did me wrong. So I can be free to be all God wants me to be. Right. There is power in forgiveness. Yes, it is. When you forgive, you unlock the jail cell that you had yourself in. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 You, you, you think because you're holding it against them, but it's keeping you in jail. Right. So this act of forgiveness that Joseph does for his brothers is so much in it. See, when somebody does you wrong, they know they've done you wrong. Right. And they are expecting retribution. Because in the world, that's what you do. Right. You mess with me? How much do we see our own community being torn down because one group did something to another group or one of their members, I'm talking gang talk, take it to another level because this family member on cousin's side did this. Now y'all can't even come to the family reunion together. And if you come, y'all ain't speaking to each other. I ain't going to talk about church. I almost cussed for the 10th time in 2023. I ain't having that stuff up in here. If you want to live like that, go find another church. Somebody does you wrong, ask them for forgiveness. If you do somebody wrong, ask them for forgiveness. We are our brother and our sister's keeper. All this clicks and all that stuff, click your way on to another church. I don't like it. I ain't having it. I know what it's like. I ain't having it. We are one family. I don't care if you a founding member or the newest member. Everybody the same. Appreciate the service over the 22, almost 23 years, but everybody's the same. The ground is level at the cross. That's like my Oh, sister sometimes. I love them, you know. But they always pull that thing on me. I'm your older sister. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> you ain't my boss. <laughs> but I changed your diapers. So what? I grew up. <laughs> Don't still try to change my diaper. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm saying? That kind of stuff keeps people divided. And that's not how God wants us to walk. He wants us to walk in this place of forgiveness. So important. I say it again. If you don't learn the power of forgiveness, you'll stay in a jail that you created as long as you don't forgive. Anybody got your keys with you? Just act like you got your hand. Get this. Just act like you got your key in your hand. All right. Just click the door. Click it. Amen. Open it up. Walk out. Ah! Throw the key away. I'm telling you, if you don't forgive the people who hurt you, you can't have functional relationships going forward. <laughs> Joseph is a type of Jesus. That shows us how to forgive. He forgave them. Then not only did he forgive them. But he blessed them. He made them rich because he was rich. Right. Amen. 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 That's it. 
So you see what you miss out on? The richness of peace. The richness of assurance that he's going to work everything together. For yes, sir. The richness of knowing that I'm not walking in condemnation. Romans 8, 1, there is right now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. But don't you use it as an excuse yes, sir. to go do wrong. Well, he knows my heart. And he knows it's dirty, it's evil, and it's ugly, and you need to go get a spiritual bath because all you're doing is being antinomianistic. Fancy word for doing what you want to do because you know his grace will come. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor. I don't think y'all was expecting this this morning. The main point of this is to know that through Christ, like Joseph forgave his brother, like Jesus Christ, we are the beneficiaries of the power to forgive. Yes. I want you right now, because it's so important, and I'm going to hasten on, but I want you to think of that thing that I've already told you one time to unlock, take it out, and go out. But I'm, I want you one more time to get it in your mind. Oh, you already threw it away. <laughs> Praise the Lord, all right? Well, I'm going to go back and get mine from four years ago. And I, I'm going to double unlock it. And I'm going to put up a whole nother bar that would never bother me again. It's, it's the power to move on. It's the power to go see what else God has for you. You over here Mad as hell. That ain't no cuss word in this context. And over here, oh, it's so much joy, peace, love, and happiness. You stand over here. Click, click. Bam! Yeah. Come on, God! Come on, God! Yeah. Make you come home early. <laughs> Make you stay out all night long. <laughs> oh, forgiveness. Y'all getting this? prayer for you. Don't live another day holding anything against your loved ones, anything against anybody who's done anything to you. Release them and release yourself. Shows us, shows us that. And he says those words, they are scared as they can be when he reveals himself to them. And he says these great words, y'all meant it for hunger. In other words, listen, y'all thought y'all were hurting me. But I wouldn't be the second most powerful man in Egypt and second richest man if it hadn't been for what y'all did to me. When you get to your destiny, tell them thank you. Thank you for hurting me so I could move on. Thank you for firing me so I could get to my destiny. Thank you for putting me down so God could lift me up and take me where he wants me to be. Thank you. For walking in out of my life so what God wanted to walk into my life. Yes, God. Woo! In day up. How are you walking with? Amen. Amen. Never alone. Never alone. He promised never to leave. Never to leave me alone. Third point, almost going, closing. How do we learn from Joseph 
to be faithful in adversity. Somebody say faithful, faithful. in the tough times. In the tough times. They come in. Tell your neighbor they come in. They come in. If you might be in the now, but they come in. And it don't come one time. Come this week, next week, next month, tomorrow, come in. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Got to learn how to be faithful to God. In adversity, Elroy. Got to be faithful to God when the thing that has been having you bound comes back and says, come in. Yeah. You know you want me. I ain't talking men and women stuff now, but that could be it too. But them vices. Yeah. Come on, sir. Could be you. Negative spirit. Yes, sir. Talking down to yourself. Uh -huh. Doubting the visions that God put in your heart. Come on, yeah. Not but not not believing that God said it and that settles it. Yes, sir. Because of the adversities, trying to change circumstances, situations, and generational curses. But every time you turn around, it seems like the same thing is popping up. Yep. Faithful in adversity. Yes, sir. To every life, you're going to have some challenges. Yes. And the scripture of the week, I say it again, tells us. So you're not, you've got to get ready for it. Craig, I loved your testimony at the upper deck. But if you think the enemy's through trying to tempt you to go back into that, you you you, you don't know who we're fighting against. That's why you've got to stay around the right people. you got to stay on your knees. You cannot relax. Can't relax. We learned from Joseph how he was faithful in adversity. Look, y'all ever been lied on? Yes. Yes. Joseph said, welcome to the club. Uh -huh. Bill Billy says, welcome to the club. Yes, sir. And it'd be different if you lied on me about something that I might be guilty of. But doggone it, you're going to lie on something that ain't got an ounce of truth in it. Y'all may as well just know liars just lie. Whatever comes to their mind, they're going to lie. I, I know I saw it. You think you saw it. Yeah. Yes. And somebody looked like that, but I know who it was. It's crazy. I pray that Joseph's inspiration as we have talked to you about how he handled the, verse, the adversity will inspire you. Because you going to have some adversity. Somebody going to lie on you, Pearlie. Somebody going to talk about you, John. Somebody going to call you everything but a child of God. The one you help the most going to be one of your worst problem situations. If Jesus had a Judas and Joseph had his brothers, you're going to have some. But let his unwavering, somebody say unwavering. Let his unwavering way he dealt with the adversity be an inspiration to you. Okay. okay, some of y'all getting that lean like you're about to go to sleep. Let me just let me just go ahead and close here. I've already talked about the importance of trusting God's providence. And it's also important for you to understand the power of his forgiveness. And probably one of the most beautiful places where we see that is when Joseph promises his brothers that I forgive you. The lesson for that to me is when you say you forgive, don't let it just be words. But let it be real. 
And he shows that because he goes on to restore the relationship with them. Yeah, he took them through a little something. He took them through a little something. Had them shivering in their boots. He, 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 he did what he did because he ultimately wanted to see his daddy. And, and so he did some things to bring it all, but he was working it all together for good. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I close by saying in our own lives, forgiveness can be one of the hardest things we do. But it's also one of the most transformative acts you will ever do in your life. Because when you forgive, you not, I've said it before, you're not just forgiving them. You're releasing yourself from the burden of anger. You're releasing yourself from all of the resentment. And you're opening the doors to peace. All that God has to let you enjoy the fullness of life. And that's why he died on the cross. Yes, he did. Amen. But we celebrate the season that he had to be born in order to die. Amen. So let it go and embrace this new advent, the coming of Christ season. Amen. And you can do that. That's why these holidays are important because they are reminders to us. Of who he is. And what Joseph did. Was really exemplary. Of what Jesus did. Do I have any witnesses here. That know what I'm talking about. Y'all know he's the. He's the chief forgiver don't you? you. You know that he's faithful. Even when he's in adversity. You do remember they lied on him. You remember they talked about him. You remember that they crucified him. Yes, sir. But he was faithful in adversity. Yeah. And so it is you and I ought to be the same way. Yeah. Because surely adversity will come. Yes, sir. And you may as well get ready for it. Yeah. You've got to make up in your mind when it does come. Uh -huh. I'm going to follow the example of Jesus and I'm going to learn it from Joseph. Yeah. And I know God's working everything together for good. Uh -huh. So I'm going to trust him when I cannot trace him. Yes, sir. I know he's moving on my behalf and he's working everything together for good. So no matter what you say about me and no matter how you try to condemn me, I'm still going to walk with him. I'm still going to trust him. I'm still going to serve him. And I'm still going to live for him. Do I have any witnesses in this house this morning? The Lord's been too good for me to turn my back on him. Because he's never turned his back on me. Yes, yes, yes. I thank him for who he is. I thank him for what he does. I Thank him that through this story I could see the fullness of the adversity that will come into our lives and am able to say if Joseph could go through it, if Jesus could go through it, I'm his child, his spirit reigns in me. So bring what you will, do what you want to do. I'm able to handle the circumstances. Do y'all hear what I'm talking about? He is a type, Joseph is, a type of Jesus. But y'all know who he is, don't you? He is the one that we're about to celebrate that was born in Bethlehem, transfigured on the mountain, that walked on water, that turned fish into loaves of fish, into fish dinners for 5,000 women, and chosen all the children and saved everybody who would trust and believe in him. Y'all know who I'm talking about, don't you? I thank you for the lessons from Joseph, but let me talk about my Savior Jesus. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. And I'm glad to welcome his birthday season in. But I want to check and make sure that he's been born in you. Yes, he was born in a manger. 
I don't know where you were born, but I hope you got born again and you let him come into your heart and have the reign in your life. He's Mary's baby, but he's my savior. Oh, yes, he is. He's Jehovah Jireh, but he's my provider. He's Jehovah Rapha, but I know him as my healer, Doc. He's healed me physically. Heal me spiritually. Heal my heartache and heartbreak. Do y'all know who I'm talking about? What a mighty God we serve. He's all right. Yes, he is. Do y'all know him? Don't fool me now. Adam redeemed. Abel's sacrifice. Yes, he is. He's everything you need him to be and more. I bless his name for his goodness. I bless his name for being my forgiver. I bless his name for being the sacrifice of Christ that the enemy had to pay for my sins. And that case was paid for that debt was paid by him. I don't know about you, but I thank him. I haven't got it every eye. I haven't crossed every T. I thank him for keeping me in my own battlefields. I thank him for keeping you, Doc, on the battlefield. I thank him for keeping all y'all that are on your battlefield to serve the Lord. He's worthy of you fighting a good fight. He's worthy of you forgiving your enemies. He's worthy of you standing strong in the midst of your adversity. Because he will. Work it all together for your good. You turn your adversities into your advancements. You turn your storms into your setups for your blessings. That's the God that we serve. And we thank God for all of these lessons that we have gotten from the life of Joseph, which is a foreshadowing of Jesus. So you embrace the power of forgiveness. You handle those adversities in another way. And you make sure that you know that God's in charge. That's your antidote for all of this craziness the world throws at you. If he said it, He'll help you through. Came to knock you out. But just let it be the stepping stone to new heights in him. Don't let the adversities knock you out. Let them be your stepping stones. Thank God for this series. I don't know if I've preached one this long, Elder Child, for a long time. But I thank him. If you got anything from it, I bless him for it. And I'll say this, if it didn't help you, it sure did help me. I worked through the challenges and the difficulties and the adversities and living out the principle of forgiveness. And when I tell you I can relate to Joseph by because of his forgiveness, God is doing above and beyond all I could think, ask, or imagine. And I can only believe that Pastor Anderson, if I stayed in the place of unforgiveness, that I might not have been able to see what God was doing on the other side. Because unforgiveness will blind you. Will create spiritual black God glaucoma. Literally take your sight away from seeing that God is still working all things together. Now you got to qualify. Because that promise is for those that know him and are called according to his purpose that are striving to live for him. You fit in that category. Trust his providence. Operate in forgiveness. 
And don't let the adversities of life stop you from being who God wants you to be. Because they mean it for harm. Somebody say, but God. God means it to work it for good. That's how you get your testimony. That's how you get your testimony. I can tell you he's a healer. Because I had to go through adversity. I can tell you he's a hot fixer. Because I had to go through an unnecessary hard divorce. I can tell you he can heal it. And help you to move on. And see what the end will be. Are y'all hearing me? I want you to make this declaration as you stand on your feet. Declare, I will be faithful in the adversity. Come on, somebody say it like you mean it. Hallelujah. Make this declaration. As of December 10th, 2023, I'm not holding any unforgiveness against anyone. I am free. I have been set free. And he who Jesus set free is free indeed. I make this last declaration. I'm trusting God's providence for my life. Family, he knows where he's trying to take you. Be a willing travel passenger. Let him lead and you follow. Because if you're a believer, he has made a deposit in you. It's called the Holy Spirit. And you don't get off track without knowing you off track. Y'all got quiet on this. Say amen to that. Amen. You don't just fall. You got to be listening to his voice. Mother Williams, I love that old song they used to sing, Where He Leads. Because the path he's going to lead you to, it might be through some adversity. And then that adversity, they may mean it for home. Let me leave this alone. It's going to work together for good. Would y'all help me to preach to your neighbor one more time? I'm telling him, wait on the Lord. Somebody tell Tina that. I need nobody tell Max, tell Tina. They're going to wait, wait on the Lord. Somebody tell Greg him be, it's, wait on the Lord. And Dad, tell your mama, it's, tell your mama, wait on the Lord. Thank you. And, and, and don't forget this, and be a good cook. And guess what he'll do? He will strengthen your heart. Why your heart? It's the seed of your emotions, and emotions drives. Amen? People are in jail now because they let an emotion of anger make them do something in a minute that they've spent a lifetime paying for. My invitation for you today is the giver of everything. all of these wonderful gifts is the Lord Jesus. Whose season is always his season. But we just commemorate his advent, the coming of the Lord. So if there's somebody who has never asked him to come into your life and be your not only Savior, but your Lord. That means I'm no longer in charge of me. The old song said, Mother Williams, I surrender all. And if I go back and try to be in charge, I'm going to repent. And I'm going to get back under his sovereignty so that he can continue to lead God and direct me. Because I'm under his direction. Would y'all help me this morning to extend the invitation, get in practice for it. Just ask your neighbor, are you a Christian? Ask him, are you a believer? 
they say yes, then rejoice with them. If they say, I don't know, I'm not sure, tell them, we can get that business straight. Do you want to be saved? Do you want to make sure your eternity after this life is over is assured? Because you're going to check out of here. We're going to check out of here one day. I'm glad I don't have no questions about where I'm going. Because my sin can't make me go to heaven. That's what old people tried to make you feel. No, when you accept Jesus Christ, you saved until your day of redemption. The part we got to get straight is the discipleship part. So our light is shining bright and we're not confusing people. Anybody got a response that they're not sure they're not, they not sure they're saved? Come on to this altar. Let's get that business straight today. Intercessors, can y'all pray if somebody needs to get saved and right now they would accept this invitation. It'll help them handle their adversities. It'll help them to forgive and they will see that God had them here for this day so that you could providentially make the most important decision you'll ever make and that is to give your life to Jesus Christ. Does that mean we got a saved house today? But that doesn't mean we have a house just walking in the fullness of who they should be. And so there might be somebody who is saved. But you need today to make a phenomenal U-turn. Because of how you've been living. Is that anybody? If so... Don't feel guilt or shame. I'll come right down here with you. Amen. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Thank you, Thomas, my uncle's name. I love you, man. Happy to see you, man. Getting out your Uber this morning. Coming to church, man. Early. Love that, man. Know that you're forgiven. Who else? Who else? Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, you said you, you came at the early altar call. Come on again if you still know you need some. So you still know you need assurance of your absolute forgiveness. Assurance of your determination to walk with the Lord. Walk firmly with Him. Come on. Come on. Don't play with it, Brother McDuff. If you're walking this way, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You ushering, but let's let Him usher you into the newness of life. That ain't no one time thing. I'm standing right here with y'all. The devil is not going to have victory in your life because of your shortcomings. That's right. Absolutely. Jesus paid it all. But we can't get comfortable. I hear there's somebody else. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to force you, but if you know God, I, I'm asking for your complete redemption, forgiveness of the Lord. Please, I, I don't want to keep on walking the same way, God. Come on. Can only the truth set you free. I know it's happening. I know it's going on. Because you're human. Come on. Thank you for being honest with God. This is a house of healing. Everybody looking at you funny because you come to the altar. We rejoicing. Let me come down here with you to make you feel better. Come on. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing, God, in thankfulness of your forgiveness. Hold this for me. Who else? Hey, this is Dr. Bill Bennett from Good Success Church in Washington, D.C., and I want to thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We pray that the message has been a blessing to you today. 
Listen, if you're ever in the D.C., Maryland, or Virginia area, we welcome you to come by and visit with us. I'm sure you'll be inspired by our services. And we're located at 4401 Sheriff Road Northeast in the Deanwood community of Washington, D.C. Listen, if you'd like more information about the church and all of the various things that we're doing, we'd love for you to give us a call at 202-398-3000, or you can certainly tune into our website at goodsuccesschurch.org, goodsuccesschurch.org, or you can certainly connect with us on all the social media platforms, Good Success Church DC, and we'd love to connect with you. Again, thanks for tuning in. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next week.